What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's going to be a little bit of a aerodynamics CFD video. The part we're going to be going over is our GT350 splitters. All right, so if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. Like I've just mentioned in the intro, we're gonna do a little bit of CFD um, data uh, going over a real world example of our splitter. Now these splitter kits are available on our website, link below. That's about all I'm gonna do for a sales pitch on you guys. The rest hopefully a little entertaining and educational for you. Uh, but yeah, let's jump right into it. So from the outside, our GT350 splitter kits don't look too dissimilar from just about anything else you'll see. But when I was doing the mounting video of this splitter kit, I mentioned I was gonna do a video on what we do to the shape of it to make it outperform anything else. I'll put a tag to the mounting video up here, but all the magic on this splitter blade happens underneath. So since I'm in the middle of the fender mold project and the fender's off and liner's out, really easy to see the factory tunnels on these GT350s. You can see how they dump out into the wheel well here. We go underneath and from a head on shot, you can see how they kind of dump into the wheel well. And that's where the first advantage of ours comes in. When we make these splitters in house, we actually shape our core material to be much thinner on this trailing edge here. So the whole body of the splitter is about a half of an inch. You can see how we radius the front edge and you can see it pretty good from this angle here. You can see how with a radius front, it gets thicker in the middle and then skinnier towards the rear effectively giving you a wing profile and this shape carries the whole way across the splitter and like i mentioned earlier this trailing edge is thinner than the thickness of the whole splitter now it can't be infinitely thin unfortunately um, but when we jump into the cfd you'll kind of see how that is an advantage over a constant just half inch thick the whole way splitter now, before we jump into the CFD, I think it'd be worth it to go over who did our CFD. We subbed that out to JKF Arrow. Uh, he's, he's probably a little bit better known on YouTube as Kyle Engineers. I'll put a tag to him down below. If you're familiar with him, he is a former Mercedes F1 aerodynamicist that started his own aerodynamics consulting company. A couple videos ago, I posted using my 3D scanner, scanning uh, underneath of the bumper cover and everything. Let's see, I'll put a little across the screen of that. I also scanned up under this whole entire wheel well and scanned, you know, the shock body, the control arms, exactly where the coolers are, everything. And the reason I'm mentioning all of that is because the CAD model that we sent to Kyle to use for all of our CFD is probably one of the most accurate CAD models I've seen CFD done on, aside from like professional level racing, more or less. So that way, when air goes through the grills, you know, the CAD model accounts for how much gap is around anything when it goes through the coolers on the side. Once it goes through the cooler, where does it go? Um, we had once air makes it under and goes through the tunnel, you know, where where does the air exiting this tunnel and this brake duct kind of go and hit and do whatever. So that that is all taken into account to be extremely accurate on our CFD. That takes our CFD to an extremely, extremely accurate level. So enough talking about CFD. Let's hop on the whiteboard. Um, and I think I'll be able to draw it out a little bit better to kind of make sense. All right, so let's say this is the hood of the car, it comes down. Uh, here's a normal splitter that is about a half inch thick. Uh, this would be like the wheel well. You got your tire here and your spokes. Um, oh, and very important in this is the ground plane. 
So that's the racetrack surface. So I know I've mentioned it in other videos where at a bare minimum, you should at least kind of like round the front edge of your splitter. One of the reasons I really don't like Alumilite is you can't do something like that very easily. But let's just say you have a square splitter the whole way. Now when we jump into CFD, you'll kind of see how when we're at a high ride height, like we are right here, there isn't a great deal of difference between the downforce of the total car when you have a square splitter like this versus something shaped like ours. Now going back to ours, with the rounded front edge, and just like I showed in the previous scene, our trailing edge kind of goes like that. And like I mentioned, it effectively, it effectively gives you a small wing profile underneath the entire bit of the car. Now at a high ride height, the CFD will show that that doesn't make very much difference on the whole package. Now the splitter blade itself does make more, we'll dive into this a little bit later. But the big difference comes in when, let's say the whole, let's say under braking, when the car squats or just the, just the springs compressing from the aerodynamic load. I'm just going to draw it lower, uh, but effectively imagine the whole car coming down or you just mount your splitter at a proper height comes down to much closer to the track. Now all of a sudden, when the air, oops, when the air coming in hits this blunt edge, you kind of get a little bit of separation off the front where when I was at a high ride height, you don't get that as much. And then with a practically level splitter splitter blade you do get a low pressure along this whole lower surface but it's nothing too great now going to our shape splitter oops a little hard to draw the air much more cleanly comes in gets squeezed between the splitter blade and the track surface here accelerating the air not only accelerating the air it does have a little bit of an area to diffuse into so enough with the whiteboard we'll jump into the cfd at this point and the cfd will kind of show this effect to a much greater amount the other thing i want to note at this point is i'm fairly confident that at the time of this recording we're the only company shaping our splitter blades um, for the GT350 with a factory under tray. There's a handful of companies out there making splitters. I don't think any of them do that. Um, but again, look at the date of this video because in the future, things might change. The other thing worth noting is profiled splitters technically are nothing new, but you, but generally they would be something uh, more custom or like some time attack one-off build, uh, something, something to that effect. Uh, so again, doing this on our standard kit, I think is a first. And last thing to note while we're here on the drawing, um, let's get rid of all these airlines. Uh, so there's our ground. Some people may be wondering what to do if you can't shape your entire splitter blade. You can just, I'm going to draw it to an extreme so you get the idea. Let's say you have a half inch splitter blade something like that right anytime we were at the wind tunnel and we added splitter angle or rake to the car downforce always shifted to the front but something like this with a square edge you kind of still get your separation kind of coming off the front there so if you round the front edge of your splitter you know what did you do you effectively gave yourself a bit of a wing or diffuser underneath of the car as well. So that's something I see people kind of get confused about. You know, yes, the splitter is pointing up from here to here, but effectively the whole entire splitter blade is pointing down a degree, two degree, um, kind of up to you for your car, your setup, how you want the car to feel. But there's that option as well. 
All right, so here we are with our CFD images on the top left. We have the square flat profiled splitter at 30 millimeters ride height and 80 millimeters ride height. On the right hand side is our profiled splitter at 30 millimeters and 80 millimeters. The first thing that will jump out is at the 30 millimeters, you can see how much more just low pressure we have than the square flat splitter. And we'll get into numbers in a little bit, but that's the first thing that really jumps out at you is the splitter blade itself under a low ride height. Now 80 millimeters, which is about three and a quarter inches, you can see the square edge actually has a larger low pressure zone right across the leading edge than our profiled splitter over here. But if you look at the entire body of the splitter, this one gets back to a yellow even an orange color over here on the side where ours is green throughout the body and just a little bit of you know yellow touching on orange over here on the side so even at an 80 millimeter ride height the splitter itself does make more downforce and the other thing you got to realize is even though static ride height if you set it at three and a quarter inches as soon as the car is at speed and it gets aero load it will be lower because very quickly the profiled splitters performance overtakes the square edge now another thing worth noting is if you look at the tunnel the factory splitter tunnel entrance which is right here on all of them on our splitter you can see how we got a little bit blue low pressure at the throat of it right here and right here where the square edge, since you lose that velocity of air and get turbulence coming off of the hard trailing edge right here, you lose some downforce right there on both of them compared to ours. And then fourth and final note is if you look at the under tray itself, the area I'm circling with the mouse, yellow is not as much high pressure as over here. You can see how this is much more orange than ours. And even this little tiny tunnel, which, which I'm pretty sure blows air across the, um, or it's meant to blow air across the uh, transmission. You know, you can see how we even start to generate a tiny, tiny bit of low pressure on those at low ride height versus over here. High ride height, uh, there's a little bit of a difference, but not nearly as much as, you know, once the car starts to take some air load and get a little closer to the track. So here's our Y slice pictures. Uh, again, our profiled splitter is on the right. Uh, a more typical square edge constant radius, or I'm sorry, constant thickness flat splitter on the left. You can see how at a higher ride height, you do get a localized low pressure right off the leading edge of the square edge but you can see how that turbulence if we look at this one right here versus ours in the same location over here you can see how much more turbulence you get coming off of the flat splitter and how that just carries down the rest of the car where ours stays nice and attached not nearly as bad and again you look at the top one we'll do this one right here you can see how much turbulence you get versus ours which stays nice and attached and you can even see how this one kind of just separates and doesn't really do much where ours does end up following the splitter tunnel a little bit so again like i mentioned earlier this one kind of points this one kind of shows you know how much better attachment you get and you know less drag is created by tapering our trailing edge again all right, so here is our X slice, just like the last one, just going across the car. If you look at this one right here, just past the trailing edge of the splitter, you can see how you're already starting to get turbulence, which just kind of builds up as it goes down along the under tray versus ours, which stays a little bit more attached, a little bit better flow. And again, that just kind of goes to show why in this area right here, you can see how we have a little bit of a lower pressure than the square edge over here. And same thing, X slice uh, showing some of the turbulence coming off of the square edge and how that just kind of grows as it goes down and along 
the high ride height you can see over here versus ours which you can see how the turbulent the turbulence is much less again just kind of showing you how you get better attachment more downforce while creating a little less drag all right, so here's a screen grab of the total report that Kyle, that JKF Arrow sent me. Our profiled splitter at 80 millimeter ride height. You can see our numbers here at 35, 80 millimeters and 35. Now, a quick note, I think in all the CAD models, I put 30 millimeters, but correction, they were 35 millimeters. Effectively, this column right here is front downforce with rear downforce. Quick note, you can see how the car is extremely rear aero biased. Here's the car effectively as it was done modeled. It has our Fulcrum 14 with a half inch gurney. I think it was at zero degrees, looks about zero in this picture. And the CAD model of the GT350 we had had the factory spoiler, in it, spoiler on it. So you can see how it's extremely rear aero biased in this setup where our front end had our splitter. The only thing we really had was side plates, but you know, factory hood, no hood louvers or anything. So that's what we were working with. And again, the tests were mainly to change the splitter or the shape of the splitter blade. And that was it. And at this point, I gotta let you know that just these few runs aren't the only ones we did. You know, we have a bunch of runs in the past, Kyle did a whole bunch of work with us on our diffusers, our um, Apex 8, 12, and 15 dual element wings, uh, splitter tunnels, uh, canards, I know uh, side plates, I know I'm missing a few things. But anyways, um, you know, in order to kind of just focus on one thing on this video, this is the information I'm giving you, but on the back end we have enough where even, you know, makes my head spin a little bit. So remembering back to our CFD images, the lower ride height, the profiled splitter versus the square splitter is where the big difference was. So the square splitter at the low ride height had a coefficient of negative 0.12, while our profiled splitter had a negative coefficient of 0.47, which is almost four times the amount of downforce from our splitter versus a non-profiled splitter. So even though our profiled splitter at 80 millimeters performed a tiny bit worse, you got to imagine once you get up to speed and a little bit of air load on the car, at 75 millimeters, our, our splitter and front end setup starts overtaking the square edge and, and that performance increases exponentially as it gets a little closer to the ground. And this is one of the cool things about CFD versus, you know, when we go to the wind tunnel. CFD, Kyle was able to pull out, you know, how much downforce does just the splitter blade make. So that's why I know that our splitter makes more, but you're not driving just the splitter. You're driving the whole entire car as a package, right? Um, so that's why I'm giving you numbers of the complete package as well. All right, guys. So there you have it. Hopefully it now kind of makes sense as to why we shape our splitters like we do. I figured I had to do this video because a lot of people wouldn't even notice that small of a detail of how we shape them. If you use this information on your own splitter, go for it. I always like sharing information, but again, if you want one of our splitters, we can do custom splitters um, or we have splitter kits for GT350s as well. So as always guys, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.